Stan Gibalisco here, proprietor and operator of amateur radio station W1GV, Whiskey One Golf Victor, or Good Vibrations, with a little bit more about receiving antennas for shortwave listening. But in particular, this type of antenna will work not only for shortwave, which is the high frequency or HF part of the spectrum, but it'll also work for the low frequency part of the spectrum and even in some cases for the very low frequency part of the spectrum. Now what do I mean by HF, LF, and VLF? Well it'll also work in the medium frequency part of the spectrum. The high frequency part of the spectrum technically is the range from 3 to 30 megahertz and they go in orders of magnitude uh, by multiples of three so the medium frequency range is 0 0.3 to 3 megahertz or 300 kilohertz to 3 megahertz the low frequency range technically speaking the low frequency range is 30 to 300 kilohertz. You'll find a lot of interesting stuff down there in the very low frequency range. Well, you might call it 3 to 30 kilohertz, although nothing is allocated below 9 kilohertz as far as I know, so you might call it 9 to 30 kilohertz. Some texts will call it 10 to 30 kilohertz, but you get the basic drift. High frequency, medium, low, and very low. Now, by today's standards, HF isn't really very high in frequency because radio signals go up as high as hundreds of gigahertz. But for our intents and purposes here, the bands of interest range from about 10 kilohertz to 30 megahertz or roughly this range right here 10 to 30 kilohertz now i've talked about an indoor attic antenna and other wire antennas but when you get interestingly enough you may actually find that antennas like this don't work very well even if you can make them very long because they simply pick up too much noise. But there's another way to do this, and that is to have some kind of a small loop antenna. Now by small loop, I mean that the circumference C should be less than a tenth of a wavelength. So for example, on the 80 meter, on three megahertz, a wavelength is 100 meters, okay? So the total circumference should be less than 10 meters on that frequency. As you go up in frequency, you need to make it smaller and smaller, but you can make multiple turns in that loop so that you can actually make the loop, say, maybe uh, 30 or 40 centimeters in diameter with multiple turns, tune it with a variable capacitor. Well, let me see if I can get that symbol straight tune it with a variable capacitor so that it resonates on the frequency of interest. Uh, it's just like a simple tuned circuit that you would have in the front end of any shortwave radio receiver. And then this goes to a sensitive radio frequency preamplifier and thence to your radio. Now the key to this particular kind of circuit is this amplifier right here. You need to make it very sensitive so that it can amplify the relatively weak signal that comes from such a small antenna. Then you can take this wire loop or this uh, shielded loop in some cases and you can orient it in all directions until the noise is minimum. The, by noise, 
it's just everywhere so i might as well write it all over the whole page it's human pa uh, made noise that comes from an increasingly diverse and aggravating potpourri of appliances that generate radio frequency interference um, uh, those uh, compact fluorescent bulbs will do it ordinary fluorescent lights will do it hair dryers vacuum cleaners all manner of electric motors when they don't function quite right will do it it's just a mess and in my location it is a real bad mess and I've been thinking about an antenna like this for receiving now I built a system just about like this back in uh, 1980 roughly 1980 when I worked for a company called International Electronic Systems I don't believe it exists anymore as such but it imported ham radios from Japan and my job was to evaluate those radios as to their suitability for American distribution and I also suggested features for new radios and in conjunction with a friend uh, I forget his call sign but his first name was Mark he was the senior technician there at the company uh, in conjunction with him we built a little preamplifier and a small loop like this and inside of a concrete and steel warehouse where our company was located our little shop there was located I was able to hear and he was able to hear short wave and ham radio from all over the world with a little antenna that we could literally sit right on the desktop so it would certainly work in a frame house and it would certainly be an excellent option and there are commercially manufactured kits and other uh, and fully manufactured items for sale that do exactly this what I would suggest that you do is Google on the phrase active antenna and you'll come across a whole lot of options for this kind of an antenna all the way from getting the parts yourself and putting them on a circuit board and building them according to the diagram that they suggest all the way from your do-it-yourself kit to a pre-supplied kit a link to one of which I shall include in this um, video in the description of the video it's a ham radio operator LZ1AQ I believe he's in Bulgaria um, activeantenna.eu sounds like a very very good design I haven't actually tried it so I'm not going to recommend it as such but I you might want to explore that option or a multitude of others just Google on that phrase that is an excellent option now by active that means that it needs a source of power in order to operate that source of power typically being a battery that can range anywhere from 6 volts up to maybe 14 volts whoops uh, not 144 volts Stanley that added that'd be a bad scene maybe 18 volts it, it depends on the particular design but a lot of them just use those little 9 volt uh, so-called transistor batteries that are only about the size of oh shoot you know about the size of a thumb drive I guess so that's what I would recommend as another option if you have problems with human made electromagnetic interference or radio frequency interference noise which just about anybody who doesn't live out in the middle of nowhere these days is going to have with that I will conclude this little discussion and set you out on your own uh, it's kind of a trial and error business well it is a trial and error business all of antenna uh, engineering really uh, when you get down to it is is you start with a little bit of theory and see if you can find something that you think might work and then you fool around until you find something that does and if you can't find something that does in a year maybe you'll find something that does in a year and a day 
Stan Gibalisco, W1GV Ham Radio Operator, saying 73 best regards. Until next time, so long.